On debate, Senator Dusko. Madam Speaker, having asked my colleagues nearby, may I speak without a mask? Thank you very much. Honourable colleagues, I rise today to speak to Senator Galvez's motion to recognize that climate change is an urgent crisis that requires an immediate and ambitious response. Such a motion is not unprecedented. In fact, on June 7, 2019, the House of Commons passed a motion put forward by former Environment and Climate Change Minister Catherine McKenna to declare a national climate emergency in Canada. As Senator Galvez has said, by passing this motion, the Senate will demonstrate the solidarity our fellow citizens expect and send a strong message to the House of Commons and the government that the Senate is finally ready to take on the challenge and will henceforth expect more ambitious and meaningful climate action. As of December the 4th, 2021, a climate emergency has been declared in over 2,000 jurisdictions and local governments, covering 1 billion citizens worldwide. In Canada, over 500 local governments, covering 99% of the population, have declared a climate emergency. We are beginning the year 2022 knowing that catastrophic events took place last year. Floods, fires, unbearable heat waves. In British Columbia, the coroner's service would eventually report that 526 people in the province died as a result of the heat. And an analysis from World Weather Attribution, a collaboration of scientists, later determined that the devastating heat wave would have been virtually impossible without climate change caused by human activity. If we do not want this crisis to worsen, we need concrete action. For almost three decades, the United Nations has been bringing together almost every country on Earth, including Canada, for global climate summits. In that time, climate change has gone from being a fringe issue to a global priority. For the first time ever in Paris in 2015, every country agreed to work together to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees and to aim for 1.5 degrees. As well, there is scientific consensus that climate change is attributable to human activity and that greenhouse gas emissions must be massively reduced. The COP26 meetings held last year in Glasgow identified in particular the need for significant new investments to fight climate change. It is clear to everyone involved in this area that concerted action is required to meet these ambitious goals. Others speaking to this motion have spoken eloquently with respect to the extent of the climate crisis and the actions that are required, and I will not repeat those arguments here. The main purpose of my brief comments today is to, to try to understand how Canadians themselves view climate change and whether we are up to the challenge. Recently, I read a piece in the Globe and Mail describing the booming worldwide demand for luxury cars, massive three-ton structures with fuel consumptions rating a rating of 12 miles per gallon, but you can get 17 on the highway which are flying off the dealer's lots. And when you read this, you have to wonder about how such disdain for the environment can coexist with our climate challenge. Still, I want to try to make sense of some of the public opinion research on aspects of climate change. We can look at it from the perspective of Canadians' awareness of the existence of climate change, their knowledge regarding climate change, perceived consequences of climate change, and last but definitely not least, what Canadians are willing to do to address the issue. International surveys, as well as Canada-only research, confirm that Canadians' understanding of climate change has come a long way, a very long way. A report by the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication presents results from an international survey 
conducted in over 30 countries and territories worldwide in February and March of last year. Among its many findings, 89% of Canadians say, yes, climate change is happening. And this ranks Canada in fifth place, imagine there are four other countries higher than 89% in the world, in recognizing this basic fact. Similarly, in October 2021, an, an, an um, abacus survey finds that almost all Canadians, 93%, believe there is at least some evidence that the Earth is warming, and that includes 69% who say that there is either conclusive or solid evidence that the average temperature on Earth has been getting warmer over the past few decades. And this latter view has increased over the previous six years with a notable increase in the numbers of Canadians who now say there is conclusive evidence of warming temperatures. Knowledge that global warming is caused by human activity is growing. In 2015, 71% felt that global warming was being caused by human activity. This is now 75%, according to Abacus. Similar findings are shown in the Yale study, with 86% of Canadians agreeing that climate change is mostly caused by human activities, or equally by human activity and natural changes. I conclude from these and many other similar findings that there is significant awareness and knowledge of climate change. But what about the climate emergency that is at the heart of the motion before us? An Angus Reid Institute survey from last November, just a few months ago, indeed shows that three quarters of Canadians believe that climate change poses a serious threat to the planet Earth. And a Leger marketing survey recently found that 85% of Canadians agreed that global warming is a serious threat for mankind. As Senator Galvez has noted in her speech to her motion, the way we should actually address climate change is subject to debate and deliberation. But since Canada has committed ourselves, this country, under the Paris Agreement, to an ambitious goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 40 to 45 percent below 2005 levels by 2030, it is clear that serious action is required. Are Canadians ready for this? Well, when it comes to individual actions, it's a mixed picture. In looking at some of the public opinion data, I was disappointed to see what I would say is a rather lack of engagement among Canadians in taking up truly impactful individual actions to mitigate climate change. For example, in a very extensive Ipsos poll taken in 2020 before the pandemic, only about 20% of Canadians say they take public transit, avoid taking planes, avoid traveling by car whenever possible in order to reduce carbon emissions. Even fewer than one in five limit their consumption of meat, limit their consumption of dairy, ride a bike, or use renewable energy in order to reduce emissions. So how do we bridge the gap between the significant awareness and recognition of the climate emergency on the one hand and the lower level of enthusiasm to take action at the individual level? In fact, the gap is actually bridged by government action. Whether we like it or not, Canadians are looking to government to take the steps necessary to deal with the climate change. For example, the Yale survey, which I mentioned earlier from 2021, shows that 7 in 10 Canadians say that climate change should be a high priority for government. And an equal number say that the Canadian government should do much more to deal with climate change. 6 in 10 strongly support, not just support, but strongly support Canada's participation in the Paris Accord. 
Governments, of course, have a vast arsenal of policy options available, including taxation, subsidies, and regulation. And public support varies for a number of policy uh, initiatives. In a Leger marketing uh, survey from 2021, for example, finds that 7 in 10 Canadians support capping and reducing pollution from the oil and gas sector to net zero by 2050. Two-thirds support a policy to stop exporting coal by 2030. And 6 in 10 support ending subsidies that help oil and natural gas companies operate and expand their operations outside Canada. And about half of Canadians, according to various polls, depending on what is asked, support the federal government's carbon pricing initiative, which is its most significant policy in place meant to reduce carbon emissions. Now, all this being said, we have to recognize that the COVID pandemic and its challenges to Canadians' health and to the economy has shifted the focus somewhat toward these issues on the national agenda, especially in the recent period. Also, inflation has grown in importance as an issue in recent months and during the recent federal election campaign. And this concern adds to existing unease about jobs and income security. Still, it's very important to note that even in this challenging economic environment, Canadians place environmental concerns at least on an equal footing with economic concerns. This was found in a 2021 survey conducted by the Environics Institute, and as well, Nano's research found in a 2020 poll that 49% of Canadians place the priority on the environment, even if it causes less growth and job loss, compared to 39% who prioritized jobs and growth over environmental protection. Colleagues, in my brief comments today, I've tried to present a picture of some aspects of public opinion related to the, client, to the climate emergency. I would conclude that Canadians have come a very long way in their understanding of the climate crisis. They are aware that climate change is real, and they understand it, and they see that its impact is immense. They look to government to take actions, and they support some serious policy directions. I also believe that Canadians are open to more change on a personal level. If over 80% of us can be persuaded to double vaccinate over the course of one year, that is, going from 0% to 80%, so too, I believe, we can make progress in promoting better individual actions around the environment. By passing this motion, I think, I believe, the Senate can bring our strong voice to this debate and continue to move Canada and Canadians in a positive direction. So I say to us all, let us pass this motion, this motion with enthusiasm. Thank you, merci, and miigwech.